Hey, this is Chris. Welcome back to Armand Simmentals. So this video is a little something different, a uh, little different format. Uh, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a history, a little bit of a why Simmentals kind of thing. I've mentioned it before and wanted to get that out to you guys. So I shot it over uh, a couple different days, so you might notice that. But I hope you like the video. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and uh, support the channel. Calving season's right around the corner. We don't want you missing that. And we want you to follow along and stay up to date with everything going on with us and our cementals. So, hope you like the video. All right, so since it's still nice out tonight, let's chat a little bit and a little bit of story time. Why cementals? You know, why? Why cementals? Why not Angus? Why not Herefords, Limousine, Charlet, any of those other ones? Well, to be honest, it's dad's fault. When grandpa got rid of the dairy cows in the 70s, I think it was early 70s, mid 70s, somewhere in there, you'd have to ask dad. He started breeding up with Angus bulls on a few cows that he kept. And I can't remember if he bought a couple of Angus cows or not, but essentially by the time uh, I can actually start remembering animals, we basically essentially had purebred uh, Angus cows and <clears throat> an Angus bull. I think they had bought an Angus bull from somebody and then just bred up from there. But they were all solid black and they were multiple generations bred Angus. Uh, so after doing that for about 10, 15 years or so, uh, dad wanted to kind of get a little bit more frame. He wanted to maximize some heterosis. And you know, especially back then and still today, one of the best crosses with Angus is Simmental's. Dad started looking around and like, I don't know, 45 minutes, uh, a little bit north, a little bit west of us, um, around the Medford area was the Prochno family. And they were, they had some Simmentals and they were the old traditional, like big frame. And they were mostly show cattle. They actually did show a lot of them. Some of them were halter broke that we purchased, but dad got like, I want to say seven, seven registered Simmentals that were bred. And uh, Grandpa thought he was a little nuts, you know, thinking, why the heck do you want to do that? Why do you want to buy Simmentals? All that kind of stuff. And Dad said, well, I, I just want to, I want to try it. I want to see, I want to see what the resulting calf looks like. You should be getting, you know, free weight out of that heterosis, which you do. You know, you get, you get that extra gain, you get that extra. Um, that little boost and we did get really really good calves out of it uh, we got because uh, a lot of those cows were diluters we ended up getting um, a lot of chocolates like legit chocolate color uh, we did get a couple of like l actual grays and then we did get some blacks and stuff like that and you know one knock on Simmental's especially you know still even today that people remember from years ago is that the calves are so big big calves they always say well if it's a big calf it's going to be hard calving well dad actually said that the simmentals didn't calve real bad it was actually putting a angus bull on those simmental cows because those angus were so square and coming out of the simmentals we actually he actually had to pull a bunch of them because of that issue. Calving ease with Simmentals is is kind of an old an old myth. Dad also decided to do a little bit of AI or try to do a little bit of AI. I had shown that little ABS table. He tried it on a couple of cows. He we got a couple of AI calves. I think he used found some old pa paperwork that had like generation three or something like that. I think he was like a single nick double time son or grandson or something like that. Uh, but that's how we kind of got into the pulled uh, genetics of the old traditional Simmentals. Uh, but then from there, we just kind of started breeding up and just kind of liked, uh, liked the way that the Simmentals were doing. The other thing, you know, because our Angus were like the old, you know, small, stocky, um, they were a little pot belly Angus, not Angus of today. Angus of today have gotten a little bit bigger. And I'm definitely not knocking angus or i'm not knocking herefords or limousine or anything like that there are definitely really nice animals in all breeds you know as 
Simmentals have maybe come down in size a little bit. Angus have come up in size a little bit. They're very, very comparable in size of today. Angus still probably runs a little bit smaller than an average Simmental, but, and we still, you know, went out with them, we rotated them. You know, we don't work, we didn't work them like we work our animals today. We probably didn't spend the time with them as we spend with them today. And granted, in the mid, you know, I was literally slow single digits at this time. Uh, so I barely remember some of them, but I do remember some of them at the time. Um, but they're also much more aggressive. They did not mind our electric fences very well. And we still had decent fences, um, but the Simtals did tend to be a lot calmer, a lot easier to work with, uh, a lot more docile on average. Uh, every breed has their, has their nuts so quacks. Um, that's a technical term, by the way. Um, every breed had their nuts so quacks and crazies. You know, that's, that is a given. I don't think it really matters what breed you have. You're going to have them and you're going to have good ones in every breed. And I think my dog is coming out to help. But from there, we just, we, we just liked the way that the Simtals were working for us. Um, and from there we kept breeding up, breeding up our, our cattle to purebreds. And that's one thing I do like about the Simmental Association, the Simmental breed, is that you do have the ability to breed up. You know, so we started breeding up our animals to a purebred status. We weren't registering anything at the time. Um, none of that stuff. That didn't happen till, that didn't happen till like the, like 2005, I think is when I started registering stuff. I kind of got in that kick of doing that as I started to get a lot more involved in the day-to-day -day operation. We had essentially a closed herd. Actually, we did have a closed herd until the late 90s, until like 99. And we kind of started to have a little bit of issues as we kept bulls. Calves started getting, started getting smaller. We actually had a couple of genetic glitches, probably because we were doing a little bit too much inbreeding uh, with having a closed herd because, you know, we're just a small operation and not that we didn't necessarily know any better. Um, we just didn't really think we were gonna have any issues like that. But then we made a decision, we need to go out and buy ourselves a bull. So we found, we started looking in the Ag View, uh, which is a nice little newspaper in the state of Wisconsin. If anybody knows about it, you can get that. It has flyers, good articles, all that stuff. And we started looking in there and that's where we actually found a guy and his name was Ir Irwin Hoschel. And he's from Black River Falls, and he had been running uh, Simmentals, registered Simmentals for quite a while. But Irwin had some really, really nice stuff. He even had some really nice traditional red and white bulls there, which is kind of what we wanted at the time. And we got a really nice bull. Uh, he was J83. He was a coffee time son. And if you put him next to any fleck bull you would see today you'd swear that's a that's a fleck bull he was he was a nice 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 bull and from there we just we started about every three four years i think he went two seasons and he hurt his back hip then we went back to Irwin and had that bull for for a few years and then after that Irwin didn't have any at the time when we picked him out. So we actually ended up going up to Luck, Wisconsin. He ended up having a red reality son, which was a really, really nice bull. We called him Lucky, twofold. He's from Luck, and he was Lucky. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of funny. We wanted to really actually get up in numbers a little bit, so we purchased five heifers from Irwin that were really nice. They were all registered, and that's actually when we started getting into the kick of registered animals. From there, in like, for the last 15 years or so, we've been doing AI. The first two years, we went through ABS, uh, and the rest of the years, we've been going through Gen X. That's probably backwards for you guys, but we've been going through Gen X and using their bulls um, because they're literally an hour west of us. ABS is two hours south of us, you know, kind of horse apiece. But we just, at the time, we, we had a really good tech in the area, and he's been really nice for us. Um, but as far as, like, the actual animals go, you know, what we like about the Simmental breed is you just, and, and granted, like I said before, you do get this in a, in a lot of other breeds. But for us, we just see that it's a little bit more consistent. You, you get 
you get good and solid performance. You get good, solid mothering ability. You get good milk. And they've just, they've just been really good for us. And we've wanted to stay with Simmentals. And we've used, we've used some Sim Angus bulls, some three quarters, uh, so that we could get purebreds out of them. Um, sometimes that's been my fault. Dad's wanted to try a couple of half bloods, um, and I want the resulting purebred. So we compromise and only do the three quarter. Um, so we've done that. And then, you know, we, we have also, you know, and like, as far as like milk stuff goes and using EPDs and picking bulls, you know, like I've, I've noted our all arounds and kind of having duds with those calves because they just don't milk you can still do that even with simmentals you know a lot of people will say that you know any simmental cow has plenty of milk well i'm sure there are every line and every breed that you use that line end up with no milk and that's for us that's what happened with the all arounds but i think overall the performance that we get the mothering we get the milk production we get and the meat quality we get we get very I, we don't really pick bulls and breed for meat quality you know should we maybe a little bit we want a good next next cow that you know if we got if we knew we were getting a heifer every single calf then what can we do to make the next one the next cow better does she need a little bit more milk does she need a little bit more calving ease a little more growth you know i i do i actually do a lot of the bull picking and then i talk it over with dad and say hey this is what i found this is what i want to use and this is why um so when i pick them out those that's kind of what i look at i don't ever try and use this is the new you know hot flash in the pan i'm not trying to i'm not trying to chase a number i'm not trying to always use the highest growth bull the best calving ease bull i just i want a bull that has good performance um in in those areas but i'm not chasing the best number out there um i just want him to do what his number tells me tells me it's going to do i do like trying new bulls but he better have a very good producing dad or mom behind him to, you know, get him, you know, give him a little credit, a little clout or, you know, and, or he had some DNA testing that gives him a little bit of accuracy behind his numbers. The next why is why Fleckfe? Why the full bloods? Kind of along the same lines as what, dad came up with when he wanted to do Simmentals is he wanted you know a little bit more growth a little more performance and one thing especially in the full bloods you know the whole purpose of keeping that purity of full blood full blood you need to be a hundred percent and it needs to be of going back to foreign origin um, going back to um, going back to Europe as far as the Simmental line goes to get your um, full blood status there is no there is no black full blood in Simmentals there isn't and none, none of that stuff um, and then there's full blood and then there's also a um, hundred percent full fleck and when somebody says a hundred percent full fleck that means it's going all the way back and it's going to end in and this is the way it's been explained to me it ends that pedigree ends in germany or austria uh that's that's just the way it's been explained to me now granted if you look up um where simmentals originated from they all originated from well they originated from germany the swiss alps austria that whole whole area is kind of where the whole simmental line has originated from you know hundreds of years ago but it was really just a way to try and get um, some natural natural muscle into them. And it's almost, on on black Simmentals, it's almost kind of like a little bit of a crossbreed, even though they're still in the same breed. But but that's, that's kind of why we wanted to go down that road and 
you know, looking at, you know, looking at somebody like, like this girl here, we definitely want to see what she can do. You know, that's, that's one of our, our Bruno daughters, Bruno being a, a full fleck bull, seeing what a full fleck bull on one of our uh, purebreds, you know, kind of how that style of a purebred black cow goes and how it does. I mean, I've seen, I've seen pictures of it. People really like them. I'm friends with a lot of people on Facebook um, that run flex and fleck influenced cattle and they, they really like that cross, so we definitely wanted to keep a couple, at least try to. And this this last year, 2023, we, we had more heifers than we knew what to do with. And I would say if anybody is saying, why would you raise um, registered Simmentals? I would say, well, if, come buy a registered Simmental bull and put them on your Angus cows and get some awesome heterosis and, you know, get a little boost in performance. Um, you know, that's that's you know one way to look at it or you know put that you know put a black Simmental bull on some on some herfords and get a really nice you know get some awesome baldies i mean if you want really good baldies you know again you know we had like 10 that looked almost just like her this year and they turned out really, really good. And she was out, that one specifically was out of a solid black, uh, a solid black cow. So it really, you know, getting some of those blaze faces on these calves was really, really nice. We really liked it. That's just kind of a little, little story, little chat, little where, how, where, why, and when kind of thing of, of Simmentals for us. You know, why are we what we are. I mean, even in the registration, I did have to kind of convince dad a little bit a number of years ago. And, you know, our, our ASA number, uh, was originally named TK Simmentals for Tom and Karen. Um, and I bugged them for a while and got them convinced to change it to Ormond Simmentals, uh, to make it a little bit more family oriented. Um, so he'll get annoyed that I said that. And that's where we're at today. Um, so, so yeah, we have we have calves coming in a few weeks, and it's going to be pretty exciting. We've got some really nice calves. We think we're going to have. Um, we've got some bold rulers coming. The Gen X bold ruler. We've got some eagle calves coming. Um, what else do we have? We have some mic drops. Mic drop I'm pretty excited about because last year, was it last year or the year before, mic drop got struck by lightning. I found them in a catalog, or I found them, was it a catalog or did I, I might have found them on Cattle Vision when I was flipping through some of that stuff and I found a mature picture of mic drop and just really liked the way that he looked and his numbers and what he had behind him. So I wanted to try mic drop and then I didn't and then found out he got struck by lightning. So that was kind of crazy. Um, but I was able to get some last year uh, and I think I got them through Allied. And then we used a couple of them and we are trying him on at least one or two heifers, I think, just to see his, his numbers and his accuracy look okay for that. But you know, not too worried. They're also coming out of really well-developed heifers, so shouldn't be too big of a deal. But I'm pretty excited about some mic drops coming too. But I think some of the things, and I'll just kind of, I think with having the heifers in here, I can point out things that I do like about the Simmental breed is when we did have Angus, we did tend to have a lot more pink eye. Having more Simmentals and being more purebred Simmental is we didn't have as much of that. And I think, I think part of it might be, I love big fluffy ears like these, you know, the, the big, big eared Simi cows. I just, I, I really, really like that. I like, I like the way this is our state of war heifer. I love the way her head is. Um, and then that true justice with her back to us, uh, Barb, I like her head. I just, I think having those big ears helps keep those flies away a little bit more. So I think that's one of the areas that really, that really helps. Um, as far as one of the things we like about the Simmental breed, 
I, I don't necessarily like a small, small framed animal, like just a tick bigger of an animal, like a 1200 to 1400 pound cow. You know, some breeds, they tend to get a little bit too small. I know some people like, you know, that 1000 to 1200 uh, for rotational grazing. You know, I do like the idea that you can breed them up to a purebred status. Um, but then, you know, where that purebred status lands, you know, that's, I guess, up for debate. You know, a question might be is now why the full bloods? You know, this is, this is Cora right here. So Cora was Cher's first calf and she's shaping up to be a, a nice, nice cow. Um, she was a real little thing. She was like 70 pounds at birth. Then we've tried full blood sires on our purebreds for trying to get a little bit more uh, natural muscle. But it was a it was a opportunity to get a little bit of natural muscling, uh, which we've seen. We had a couple of nice bulls out of uh, a Ruggedar Bellagio bull that uh, Brian Valentine hooked me up with. I've used a little bit of uh, Guerrero. Uh, he was a nice bull that we tried. We had a couple of nice steers out of him. They just, they weren't, they didn't look like they would be really good bulls when they were, when they were calves at the time they calved. So we banded them, but they turned into really nice steers. What we did notice and what they've said too is because purebreds, they've obviously, they're obviously a little bit of a dilution. You know, they're not a hundred percent of a breed, whereas the full bloods um, are a hundred percent of a breed. Uh, and then you get into hundred percent full fleck and it's actually the full fleck the 100 percent full fleck you can trace it all the way back to austria or germany what people have said that have used um, full flecks or uh, full bloods on purebreds is that you almost get a little bit of heterosis from that combination and i, I wouldn't disagree with that at all especially since we had our first stint with bruno and those calves i don't think bruno added more than i don't think bruno really added any pounds to that birth weight he didn't cows that typically calved in that 90 pound range that mid 90s range calved in the mid 90s and cows that calved a little smaller calved a little smaller i don't think there was any noticeable change in birth weight using uh, bruno as being a full blood bull what we did notice was there was a lot of uh, vigor at birth those things they got up and they were sucking within 20 30 minutes it was it was very very nice to see so there were we didn't have any complaints about using bruno for the first time and we'll have another round of bruno calves this spring as far as things like birth weight and calving ease and things like that i mean even as soon as five years ago or something like that dad and i had taken some bulls to a bull sale and people were uh checking them out looking at them and they looked at them and they said oh those are simmentals those are cow killers and i i i i, re I remember just turning immediately and starting to chuckle um because that's such a that's such an old uh, misnomer and I think it's I think it's a bad rap on the Simmental breed granted we're still pretty new into using full bloods but I really haven't seen a big change in birth weights you know I think bulls that are gonna calve a little bigger their performance bulls they're gonna calve a little bigger uh, bulls that are meant to calve a little more moderate they're gonna calve a little bit moderate you need to know what you're breeding and what you're breeding them to um because i've seen angus catalogs with angus calves that'll calve at 100 105 pounds i've seen those catalogs and i've seen them calve at 70 pounds we've had simmentals that calve at 75 pounds we've had simmentals that calve at 110 pounds um but how many of those do we pull we rarely pull some of those calves, even the 110 pounders. We've had 110, 115 pound calves in the past and never pulled them, never touched them. The cows spit them out because it, a lot of it has to do with shape 
and just the way that calf is built you know an angus to my extent of what i know of angus is angus are a little bit wider a little more blockier but they're also a little bit smaller framed so they have a little bit lighter birth weight but then you look at a simmental who's a little bit narrower in the shoulders and a little bit longer a little bit more leg so you get a little bit more bone meaning more frame or more weight so but it doesn't mean that their calving ease is any different you know they still calve unassisted that cow spits it all like a dime and you go on with life so i think i think that part is something that you know people hear the name or like some you know maybe older time uh, guys will say, oh, I don't want a Simmental because those are cow killers, and that's that's so not true. And that has definitely not been our experience. Do we have big calves, and have we had have we had to pull big calves? Yes. Um, but it takes two to tango when it comes to calving, and sometimes it's the cow's fault, sometimes it's the bull's fault, and sometimes it's also your feeding regimen. I don't think we're going to go away from Simmentals anytime soon. I'm also getting into liking the fleck a little bit more. Um, kind of bucking uh, the black a little bit but I still really like our blacks people want them so they're not going anywhere anytime soon but I do like our full bloods I like that segment of it the more I get into the full blood side of it has also forced me to learn a little bit more of what um, what that sire does in actuality and what that mom or that dam does in actuality versus just trying to look at numbers but I also do think you know trying to get data on them get some DNA testing on them that kind of stuff to back up numbers or to make those numbers look better because EPDs are a tool and I think they're a good tool so just a couple last quick uh, things on our animals our Simmentals um, when I'm looking at animals, like I think I mentioned before, when we're looking for AI sires or, um, you know, bulls, what we want to put on our bull, on what we want to put on our cows, I'm always looking for balancing out that animal. I'm not, like I mentioned before, I'm not trying to chase numbers. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to complement things where they need help to get that next better cow. Uh, and then from there, we've just gotten good bulls after that. You know, I think, you know, I've, I've chatted with, you know, numerous people and, you know, they, they say the same thing. You build the cows, the bulls will come. Um, kind of like you build it, they will come. You have good cows, you'll get good bulls. From a physical standpoint, we're looking for a somewhat moderate frame, not super big frame, somewhat moderate frame. You know, I like, I like a really long body animal, at least proportion wise. Um, you know, I don't want super long, but super massive frame either, you know, but I like a, a little bit more of a moderate frame with some good stretch on them. Um, you know, as far as like overall physical um, animal. But uh, I hope you liked the video. If you guys got any questions about our animals, about Simmental breed, information-wise, things like that, uh, I do have uh, links in the description for the American Simmental Association and for the Fleck Bay Federation. So you can try there. If you got any questions, please ask. Hope you liked the video. Please comment, like, subscribe, and thanks for coming along.